so we had a whole bunch of our friends who are distillers, famous distillers, actually award-winning distillers. And what we asked them was, what whiskey... We asked them, what's your favorite whiskey, not your own? And they gave us some surprising answers. Let's figure out what they are. Here we go. All right, today I've got a special bottle that's uh, really close to my heart. Um, this was actually the first um, whiskey uh, of this particular type that I purchased for myself. Uh, before that I had been drinking, I was basically the antique whaler kind of guy, and this really expanded my horizons. And I'm really excited, it's got fantastic balance, good sweetness. It's got some other flavors in there I don't want to give away yet, we'll just let everybody be surprised. But um, this, uh, for me, kind of uh, made whiskey um, a much bigger bigger uh, uh, event in my life. This would have been probably circa 2008. Weren't you a minor then? No. Okay, I'm just <laughs> Are we still busting balls? <laughs> Daniel, let's be honest, this is an elaborate ruse for distillers to bring their whiskeys for us to drink. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. What do we have? What did you bring us today? Do I have to do this all kind of sexy like? This is going to be You don't ball. want to touch that glass. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's gonna oh, please. Oh, come on, Ardbeg. That's gonna please. Yes. The people. There we go. All That's right. Oh, wait, Rex. Look which Ardbeg. It's the Oogdal. <laughs> <laughs> you like the Oogdal too? The easiest one to say, <laughs> say right? Oogdal. Delicious Oogdal. Oogdal. There you go. Nice. Oh, oh thank you. Uh, Rex is just vacillating between Jack Nicholson and a weird German It's Oogdal, man- Dan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try it's it's Oogdal. Oogdal. <laughs> The delicious ooh <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear what attracted you when you first experienced this, but now you've had many years of whiskey experience, so there's going to be other things that you find in there. Well, obviously, it being an Ardbeg, this was actually my first Isle of Scotch Day. Oh, oh wow. wow. Okay. This was, yeah. um, it was, we were doing a small tour of, of Scotland in this tasting that we did at a liquor store, and I was really into barbecue at that time, and I was like, Ooh, wait a second. There's something different about this. <laughs> uh, first sip, hated it. Oh, really? Yeah. That's not oh. uh, that's not uncommon. Yeah. yeah. Second sip, loved it. Oh, yeah. wow. yeah, that's that. That's pretty fast. And yeah. then 15 minutes later, I was taking one home. So I, I think the first thing that attracted me to it was it was the brine. Mm. Like I hadn't had that in a whiskey before. Other, I mean, the smoke was obviously there, but that, that kind of saltiness. Yeah. Um, I also collect salt on the side, so that's. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, you collect salt? Yeah, different types of salt. Wait. What do you do with them? I Stop season you. food with them. Oh. Have you ever met anyone who collects salt? I mean, he's a guest. I don't want to like make it weird, but <laughs> it's pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm I'm diving in. Mm. Oh yeah. What are you getting on the palate there? Light honeyed fruits. Ah. That balances perfectly well with the smoke in this. Yeah. Smoke. So it, it has most, almost a silky mouthfeel to it. Is there anything from this whiskey that you're trying to bring to your own work in your own distillery? Um, I mean, of course, the balance, the mouthfeel, mm. those type of things. I mean, we don't play too much or dabble too much in the uh, kind of smoked whiskey area. Yep. Right. Uh, we do have one um, that uh, does have a little bit of a little bit of that peat smoke to it. Yeah. The thing that I get out of this is just incredibly multi-layered and complex whiskeys, and a, a, a lot of the things I've had at Iron Root mm. you get that same type of thing. It's not just a simple one or two two note whiskeys. You have multiple layers, multiple things going on. Well done. You can leave this here. So I'm taking this one. Thank you. Like my class. <laughs> so, the whole idea of a favorite whiskey is hard for me. At Balconies, we make a lot of stuff that's pretty over the top. There's a lot of high proof. These things are dense. They're loaded. Um, obviously, Texas climate, a lot of Texas whiskey. There's, there's a lot of wood on it. We got a lot of spice, all this stuff. Um, so I find myself sometimes when I'm drinking just for fun and not for work going in a very different direction from what we work with all the time and what we make. So this whiskey is along those lines. Uh, it can be tempting to talk about silent distilleries and like a committee release and all these things that nobody can get. But I was in the middle of a blind doing some sensory work on some of our products recently, twice that this whiskey was thrown in uh, blind. It's easy to get, it's affordable, it's a brand that I think a lot of whiskey nerds overlook, including myself. 
And sitting there in a blind, I was like, oh man, this is beautiful. And then when the reveal happens, you go, well, if this is about as basic as single malts get, then I guess I'm a malt guy because this is delicious. Oh, you came with your own glass. Cool. I yeah. <laughs> Just uh, pour it in your hands. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Time for the reveal. I'm very curious. I have no idea what this is. Um, I, I socked it. I didn't look at it, though. I, neglected I almost it. wish I could have you guys drink it without knowing because... Should we? Yeah. Okay. Pour, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, right, just sure. only yeah. the... Yep. Now, just make my pour a bigger pour. Just whatever it takes to get that pour, man. <laughs> What, just, I got, what I gotta do to get a pour, bro? Hey, <laughs> just gotta try to make it through the night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Can we look? It is, yeah. Okay. 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 So, what are we looking for? Ooh. I mean... <laughs> I mean, it's so light and fruity, but then there's some, there's some phenolic stuff under there. It's not quite cheese, but I mean, a little bit of sulfur. I mean, pick your fruit. I mean, literally, go for orchard, go for stone, look for some tropical stuff. Like, maybe berries aren't there, but like everything else. Yeah, all the lighter fruits. We always always joke, too, that you can't, like, salt doesn't actually have a smell, but smelling yeah. whiskey, you'd be like, oh, there's a little bit of yeah, salt. Yeah, there's some salt. Like, salt doesn't smell like anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do I want to say, like, an earthy mushroom? Yeah. That's wrong. That's wrong. I shouldn't say it. I'm saying earthy mushroom behind this dominantly, like, a fruitier note. I was thinking even, like, with a, a more, like, bruised, like, overripe kind of browning banana. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. You got a shroom guy? Yeah, actually. <laughs> Is this just because that guy said he's a salt collector? Is it a yeah, portabella? Yeah. Are you a mushroom yeah. collector? <laughs> Turns out distillers just really weird collectors. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's going to pull up a jar of Tony. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> so when I first picked this up, that, that sort of that musty grain malt note mm-hmm. yeah, was dominant. And it took me a second while you were talking to, for that to subside and all of that fruit to kind of show up. It's a whiskey, it doesn't seem like it's trying to prove anything, but it's super nice, and... Oh, nice! Oh, like Glenn Fittig, is that the 12? That is the 12. Yeah. Right on. I should have recognized it from the bottle. It's got that triangle bottle shape in the Glenn Fittigs. Yeah, that's super nice. This is very often um, voted up in our community very highly mm-hmm. as um, people, they want to get into scotch, mm-hmm. they want to get to, you know, some recommendations, something that you can find that's affordable. This mm-hmm. is very often hitting the top of the list there. If you diddle around a little bit, you get like a bready note. Do you know how to diddle? Like, look, like this. Look, look. <laughs> I can't afford that. <laughs> I'm anticipating that. Why, hello there. Hello, sir. So this whiskey has a really kind of special place in my heart. It comes from the very first distillery I ever visited. It is not the easiest distillery to get to, and it had uh, involved crossing oceans and taking ferries and f- puking off the side of said ferries to, to get to, to the island where this distillery lies. Again, it was a really special time in my life studying abroad and yeah, it was the very first scotch that really, uh, before this, uh, my love of spirits was really more centered in the brandy world. Uh, my dad had introduced us to Armagnac and Cognac. Um, and whiskey was just something that we, we shot in college when we weren't supposed to be drinking. And this was the first whiskey that I'd really truly appreciated. So that's why I wanted to bring it and share it with you guys today. I think I recognize the shape of the bottle. It is a pretty S- sock. Give us a little bounce, chicka wow wow. Oh, you're doing that slowly. Yeah. Just peeling. It's going to take a while. Just peeling it off. Oh, this the tip. Oh! Just, 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 you guys. Don't give it to It's not a chain operation. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was close. All right, we have the Highland Park Viking, oh, the 12 year old. All right. Yeah. Right on, right on. So, let's, oh, this is not even over here. Allow me. Ooh. Let me help Please, you. Please, sir. Let me help you. Uncork. I can't do it. <laughs> you gotta have, you gotta have, there you go. Go. Mm, have Viking, Viking strength. Viking ginger strength. You know, the, <laughs> the Vikings were predominantly a ginger people. Mm-hmm. Were they? No. It's where we come from. Were they? Throw them or have gingers spread that rumor? <laughs> mm. They spread it around all of Europe, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> 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 Alright, so the Highland Park. What do we know about the Highland Park? What uh, what category are we talking here? Scotch? So we're talking Scotch. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> Highland? Indeed, it is actually from the island of Orkney. So this whiskey on the nose, what are we finding here? It's Ooh. a beautiful malty honey. 
and that's mm. you get that little kind of subtle peat and that was yeah. again the thing that really drug me in the first time was that again you get just it's not that big punch you in the face peat mm -hmm. with the Islas it's yeah. that it's peat but it's in the background and it's more of a nuance coming out of Scotland they'll say like smoky whatever whatever black and you have to kind of damn near imagine that there's peat there but this is just the right amount of it still being a recognizable level of smoke, mm -hmm. but it also gives a lot of room for these other malty, sweetie, sweetie, <laughs> sweeter flavors to come up. The thing I like about this is that there's some blends, you know, in Scotland, <laughs> journal it, <laughs> where the peat is, you know, damn near have to imagine it, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> what are you doing? Just stole You're it. taking my notes! <laughs> But this one, no. Peat is, look, look I who's mooching! I who's just damn you now. I just said that. You just have to damn near imagine it. You know, it's like these ones they call black and things like that. But you can't hardly smell the smoke. But in this one, the smoke is definitely present, but it doesn't take over. So I, that's what I like about it. I've been carrying this hobby, son of a bitch, for years. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was this after you had started your own distillery or before? No, this okay, was before. So, before. so this okay. was, I was in college, not old enough to drink in the in, United right, States. but old enough to drink abroad. Yeah. What I love about Highland Park is they still have their own malting floor on right. site. And when you get to go through and do the tour, that's actual malt that they use, part of the pro process mm -hmm. they 100% do on site. And that was mm -hmm. one of the coolest things, seeing them actually shovel the malt oh. around. I am glad that... That's the real reason that we do a lot more stuff with corn is because we don't want to shovel them both around. Yeah. That's really what it comes with. Expediency, yeah. yeah. Gingers try to avoid the hard work. Really <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for my favorite whiskey, uh, it's disclosed right here, secretly. Um, it is a bourbon made in Kentucky that is near and dear to my heart because of the people and the place. Um, and I think just like music, spirits are the same way. The memories and the associations with it have a huge role in how much you enjoy it. This is a bourbon made in Bardstown and they do things a little bit differently. They're creative in their equipment and how they go about their day to day, which has inspired me all along the way. All right. Is that a, so what, <laughs> is that a seven, what could it be? Is that a 750 uh, million? Yeah, it looks like Laphroaig. I couldn't possibly begin to guess what's under this. It's a mystery. What did, what did you bring us today? So, I got some of the Willet Pot Still whiskey. You lied. Oh, no, it's the truth. Oh, <laughs> that's, the, that's the wrong bottle. <laughs> Back up? Uh, like a yeah, crane or... Is that a whiskey you, or a hookah? Can you, can, you yeah. can you support me? Yeah, there? maybe we need to get some structural. All right, I'll throw it right here. Let's see if I can not have any drips. Whoa! Oh, 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 whoa! Here, oh, like oh, that's good. Uh, no, one drip. No, oh, that, that no, no. This one. This one. Let's do this one. This one. This one. This one, this, this one, one, this, this one, one, this one, this one, this one. This episode brought to you by Keeps. You know that Daniel. I don't know if you know this. I don't know how you would possibly know this, but two out of three gentlemen go. They experience some kind of meal pattern baldness by the time they're thirty-five. No. You know anything about that? No. You know anything? Do tell. Do you know anything about this? I, I never heard of it. I don't want to use the term cautionary tale. <laughs> but just think about how much better your life could have been. Like right now, you're just like a middling YouTuber. <laughs> if, I'd, if I'd only had hair. Right. That's I think it's the difference maker. But uh, the best way to not have hair loss is to prevent it. Mm. Because once it's gone, it's a whole different situation. Now, Keeps, you could have been... I have plenty of hair. No, I'm looking at you right now, and I think, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm about to show you my plenty of hair. <laughs> so the keeps, there's two, only two FDA approved, uh, you know, treatments for male hair loss, and uh, this is the generic version, so it's much more affordable. You know, I didn't want to say it, but you might want to start testing Man, that product out. <laughs> look, look, I'm just saying. Look, look, it's the light. <laughs> It's What's the link? Because just as a friend. Keeps.com slash Whiskey Tribe, and you get 50% off. It's a whiskey with the new Whiskey Tribe, 50% off. So obviously super easy and surprisingly affordable, delivered right to your house. I think we should actually experience the difference that you could have had in your life if you would have gotten ahead of this. Straight at the camera, don't turn. What people don't know is back before you were gray and crusty, you were a ginger. 
<laughs> it's like I'm like I'm I'm Elton John <laughs> like with the, a beard. All right, so keeps.com slash whiskey try fifty percent off your first order and don't let what happened to Daniel happen to you. So much dark chocolate yeah, and yeah. cherries. Cherries for sure. A lot of bourbon notes. I'm getting a little. It's almost as round and robust as that bottle. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I like about it that I, I, I'm always looking for whenever I'm making whiskey mm -hmm. is that perpetual cycle of like, at the end, there's something that makes you crave the beginning again. The balance of the tannin of the oak, at the, that finish kind of coats you to a way where you want to go back to that sweet honey chocolate front. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. When the, and you said it. I mean, it, and I'm, I'm seeing this um, in the whiskeys that we've had so far. There's mm -hmm. a really nice balance of multiple flavors going on. It's it's not an incredibly high proof. Mm -hmm. um, it has a really nice like, the cherry and the mm -hmm. honey. I also get like the sweetened tea notes. And it's this is like traditional classic bourbon territory, but it's a beautiful execution of those classic notes. That's an interesting point about you saying tea because I drink more tea than I do whiskey, which is probably a good thing. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> it's definitely a good thing. Yeah, but I've never picked up like black tea, like a Chinese black tea on that. And maybe that's why I love this so much. Yeah, yeah one yeah. of the reasons. Yeah, right on. So when you empty these bottles, they're very ornate. You can't throw them away. Okay. You're obligated to keep them. Let's see where we're going with this. No, you go ahead and finish, Daniel. No, I'm where am I going? Uh, flowers, a planter. It's a vase. Hi, Deb. Hi, this, this whiskey is um, in a lot of blends, so on its own, it, I find it's outstanding. It just has a lot of complexity, um, and I think it's underappreciated. That's what okay. I should have some whiskey. Pour us some whiskey, Deb. Wait a minute. Are you more hobbity than Daniel? <laughs> I didn't think that was possible. Have you seen the licorices? They're adorable. <laughs> 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 the bottle, Deb. <laughs> Whiskey. Ah, Kulila. Kulila. Yeah, it's very nice. Yes. Very nice. That's a good one, Deb. <laughs> 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 it's, uh, it's so uncomfortable. <laughs> Never been this close to my face. No. I'm usually up here. That's true. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it is uncomfortable, isn't it? Okay, now you know the rules. I get twice as much as Daniel. Go ahead. I don't know how this became a no, rule. That's, well, that's a lot for me. Did anyone get to vote I on this? I get twice as much as that. Stop right there. You. Yes! Yes! Oh, yeah. Mm. So, man. <sighs> So I'm getting, compared, because we're, we're fresh off the heels of several other whiskeys, mm -hmm. and I'm getting almost like this uh, aged cheese quality on the nose. I get band -aid. Like a sharp. Band-aid? Sharp band-aids, yeah. <laughs> fresh band-aids? Fresh. Is it like the Flintstone one, it's, or the? Yes. The, the yeah, Marvel? It's the, yeah. The, it's like a super. Superhero. So you, you're like smoky whiskey, kind of in general, right? I do. So how does this one stand out for you then? Like what's different about it? Um, on the palate, it's very balanced, and it's the the peat is not so overwhelming that it just takes over this whiskey. Mm. And you mentioned this is actually used um, in a lot of really popular whiskeys out there mm -hmm. for adding like the smoky element to some blends, mm -hmm. some scotch. Like Johnny Walker, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I love about it is the briny notes. It's mm. very salty. Yeah. To me, this always feels like the reverse on a forty-three percent. Like, so we talk yeah. a lot about some high proofs drinking really smooth and friendly or pretty mm -hmm. but this one always feels like for a 43 it's got a lot more drama than you would think for something yeah. proof mm -hmm. down that low the reason why a lot of the whiskey nerds and enthusiasts are going for the higher proof stuff is because it's very often where you have to get proof wise abv wise to finally start to pick apart all of that nuance you just have to amp up the volume but in a lot of these whiskeys the volume's low but you still have a lot of complexity a lot of nuance a lot of things to pick apart Except for that one Jared brought. <laughs> Did you know he's actually the, the uh, largest, um, most outspoken advocate of hacky sack in the Olympics? <laughs> <laughs> he started a committee. Did you hear he won something like Distiller of the Year? I think it was an sack. award of some kind. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Uh, did you know that <laughs> <laughs> Award winners can't flick people off, Jim. Yeah, you're not allowed to do that. You can't flick people off, it's immature. We don't allow immaturity on this channel. You know what? He... <laughs> yeah. Oh, we buck, yeah, and you're pretty hot. I'm as happy as I can be.